Well, we have Sheila Weber on the line, and it is uh, National Marriage Week, and uh, they have a website, nationalmarriageweekusa.org. Sheila Weber, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, it's an interesting topic here. Uh, I see uh, that you are also uh, it's uh, it's uh, schools, and uh, you're also affiliated with uh, some religious groups as well. I I see here. Well, actually, we're um, a fairly new effort, but part of um, an international marriage week effort that's been going on for more than a decade mm-hmm. in the UK and Germany and Australia and about 12 countries uh, to elevate marriage as a national issue to get the word out about the benefits and the value of marriage, and uh, then to um, give people um, ways to help work on theirs and, or to reach out and help their friends or their families to just to strengthen marriage. So uh, we want to make sure that people realize that marriage is incredibly valuable, that uh, the research shows that married people have greater wealth and personal financial stability, they have better health, live longer lives, and that their children perform much better in school when they have both parents at home and have less trouble with the law, less teen pregnancy, and less issues with addiction. And so there have been some recent, there was a recent cover story a few months ago in Time Magazine that kind of questioned uh, whether marriage was becoming obsolete, and our answer is a resounding no, because um, marriage is an incredibly valuable institution for our country as well, because we are spending at least $112 billion a year for divorce and unwed childbearing. And some some estimates are above $200 billion a year. And in this day and age of, you know, trying to reduce our defica- deficits and being careful um, in our economic times, we, we really need to take um, a look at marriage as a national value and find more and more ways to strengthen marriage and help people to to get the help they need. A lot of folks really don't know where to go get the help, and that's what we've done at National Marriage Week USA. In fact, this week we have hundreds and hundreds of classes and conferences all across the country. You can uh, find something near you, and uh, or we have just resources. There are lots and lots of uh, really fascinating video series now and um, books and places that operate all year long, marriage education groups that operate all year long to help people. So we, we want folks to know that there's somewhere they can go to work on their own marriage. And we also have fun tips, uh, which, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up, so we have idea for a great date night on Valentine's Day. We have tips. We have a five love language quiz, a couple's checkup test and love letter kits and all kinds of fun things to bring some life back into your relationship. <laughs> uh, that is a strange part of marriage. It seems like it's, uh, it's, uh, I guess, kind of like owning a house. As soon as you, uh, as soon as you make that first payment, you got to make a repair here. You got to paint this. You got to patch this. Uh, and it seems like marriage is almost that same way. It's, it's. People are constantly talking about working to make the marriage better, to put some excitement back into the marriage and so on and so forth. It really seems like there is, it's a full-time job uh, trying to keep uh, this, this institution alive and well. Well, uh, that's true, but it doesn't have to be quite so painful all the time um, because really what we all want is deep companionship and lifelong love. That's what we want. And nobody starts out getting married thinking that they're going to become miserable. So <laughs> we just have to retool our thinking and, and, and learn skills and habits that will make our experience fulfilling and rewarding as opposed to um, difficult and challenging. And, but, but we've also found, my husband and I help people with their marriages, and we've been married a long time, and we found that there are seasons of marriage and sometimes there are seasons of stress and that when you get past them, you know, you land on the other side of companionship and comfort and particularly uh, if people can can work through the hard times and then as they go into old age, they're going to value the companionship and the comfort. Um, and that's the message that we have for people that, you know, you don't have to uh, give up quite so easily 
um, in days of old, you know, folks really did have to have a mindset that this is a commitment and not just a consumer relationship. Consumer relationship, you kind of think, well, if I don't really like the product, I'll take it back to the store and get another model. But mm-hmm. when it's a commitment, then you, you say, you know, if I'm in this, I might as well make it as good as I can make it. You know, I, I might as well make it enjoyable. And and that is possible. And we want to get the message out to people that it's possible. Um, it's interesting, we've just released some research that was given uh, out through the National Marriage Project at UVA. And... Um, they did a study on the Great Recession and marriage and how this economy is affecting people's marriages. And of, of the couples who were intending to get divorced or separated, 38% of them said they've changed their plans because of the recession. I find that a very interesting fact, uh, whether um, that just adds more hardship to people or it maybe could be a good thing And that, you know, people are going to say, you know what, I'm I'm not going to just give up so quickly, and there is a purpose and a reason for us to have a family unit. Uh, but it is it is interesting that um, our economic times are are actually impacting the way people look at their marriage. Uh, another question it did reveal that 29% of the respondents said that the recession had actually deepened their commitment. Um, if this is not um, about a national guilt trip, you know, people make mistakes and some people are on their second marriages and uh, it's really about, okay, how can how can we make that second marriage better? You know, what can you learn so that, um, you know, that you don't keep taking your same issues into the next relationship? Um, sometimes the things we need to learn are to work on ourselves and, um Marriage can be the ultimate uh, refiner's fire. You know, it can it can help grow us up and make us better people if that's the perspective we have. Um, so we just we just want folks to know that um, that that marriage actually is it pays. It's very beneficial, and there's a lot of value in it. And that the research also shows that cohabitation really doesn't work out so well. Uh, most of the cohabiting couples, you know don't lead to marriage, and for women, that's that's not necessarily something that's protective or in their best interest. Um, single motherhood impoverishes women, and um, then we find that the research shows that when cohabiting couples get married, they do have a far better chance at divorce, and so it's not the panacea that uh, this generation is, is supposing that it is. Um, so we, we would love for people to go to National Marriage Week USA um, find out about resources and particularly things happening this week. And also look ahead for next year because this is going to grow and build and we're stirring up more groups to launch something during the week leading up to Valentine's Day. 